And there are horror moments in this where there's still a baby killer and all the, a killer dressed up as a baby. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sincast. This is Chris Atkinson from CinemaSins, joined as always by the voice of CinemaSins, Jeremy Scott. Hello. And from Music Video Sins, Barrett Sher. Man, that was a weak ass hello. <laughs> well, I almost went with. See, what happens is my brain misfires. I don't spend any time week to week thinking about my greeting. And then Chris starts talking. I'm like, what am I going to say? <laughs> and the first thing that came to my mind was <laughs> something that wouldn't sound natural coming out of my voice, as it is some sort of Muslim greeting that I think I picked up from watching Malcolm X last oh, night. Oh, okay. And I thought, well, that's going to be weird. And then I just went with the generic hello. <laughs> All this happened within like a second It and really a half. did. It <laughs> really did. What are you going to say? Salam alaikum? Yeah. Oh, okay. Salam alaikum or okay. whatever. I just didn't want to be offensive. And then they had the, the return. What's the return of that? Malaikum Masa or something like that. Yeah, it's like almost that. backwards yeah, yeah, to yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, today, uh, you know, we're we're uh, we're going to have the Sin Week that's going to happen in, in March. Sin uh, Week! And uh, and it's going to be awesome. Yes, and, it is. Uh, and uh, we have a bunch of people we'd like to recognize who are the per- who who bought into the perks of being a sinflower uh, tier. Yes, and uh, let's recognize them. All right, we have a Patreon, and we have different levels, different tiers that you can sign up to become members of our community and to get access and perks and stuff like that. The biggest thing is that you get access to early access to videos, podcasts, and stuff like that. Saw somebody on Twitter. Today or yesterday, where I teased, yeah, it was yesterday, I teased uh, the the 2018 episode, yeah. and he, he said, I've already listened to it, actually, a couple of people, I've already listened to it, and it's really, really exciting. Yeah. And that's the kind of access that you get to. You you can you can listen to it and have knowledge that nobody else does there except for the other uh, members. And uh, so we're doing Sin Week, which is very, very exciting. And to get to Sin Week, as far as hanging out with us in person, doing a lot of cool stuff, you sign up for the Perks of Being a Sinflower tier. And... Part of the perks that you get for that is to get shouted out on this podcast right oh, here. Baby. So I want to do this right Can now. Can we do it in- like Key and Peele? The Rick Shaw Fury said. Aloysius, Aloysius. Doing the, the East West Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Dingle McCringleberry. <laughs> I, I still watch that probably once a month. Oh, they're so funny. It never funny. gets old to me. No. <laughs> 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 Just keep doing that while we. So we'll go through this alphabetically. All of you guys are fantastic. All of our members are fantastic. Uh, but these these guys are our sinflowers. Brian Broderick. Brian, bro. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Blake Hodges. Blake. Yep, yep. Blake Hurst. <laughs> yep, yep. Blake's. Yes. Oh, wow. Darren Watson. <laughs> Dexter Hansen. Dylan Widell. Uh, goes by Turner. <laughs> <laughs> Extra shout out there, Mr. Widell. Uh, Evan Luckin. Isaac Horvat. Jacob Martindale. Jeffrey Widman. Jim Hunter. Joshua Looper. Louise Zinner. Who is, I believe is from Australia. I believe so. Oh, um, good day, Louise. <laughs> Marvin Castro. Marvin. Mike Acton. Mike. And last but not least, Dan Hills. Yeah, yeah. You people are lovely. All of you people listening are fantastic. Wanted to give special attention to You know to what we should do players. is you should put in some music behind that. Mm-hmm. So like from the 90s, Bulls would get announced like <laughs> before basketball games. So like, <laughs> and you can like, imagine the spotlights going all over the place. I'm totally doing it. <laughs> <laughs> not, not to sour that Bulls celebration or anything, but didn't they go out to that one song that nobody likes to use anymore because... Uh, Dude might be a pedophile. Oh, oh no, that's Gary Glitter. Okay. And that's the, the that's uh, ironically the Pred celebration song. It's the da 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 da. Hey, oh, da, no. da, da, da. Well, it was. <laughs> it, 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 then it turned into the gold on the ceiling. 
I thought that they still used the, it, it's like a montage, because they do Black Keys, and then they do I Like It, I Love It, and then they do- Everybody does that on their own. Yeah, sort it's of. just the crowd still chants that. Oh, I got you. Because mm-hmm. the rhythm is the same. I but see. for like four or five years now, they haven't been using that song. Right. Oh, well, that's a good decision. <laughs> I but guess. There, but yeah, there's the, 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 the bull celebration was that one that's that, that single guitar that you yeah. hear. That do 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 Yeah, that one. I used to do that in the manager's office of the first theater I managed. It was a little three screen. And when we were like counting or whatever, I would say, turn the lights off. And there'd be like three flashlights in there. And I'd be like, <laughs> we all start waving the flashlights around the office. It's fantastic. It's one of the best build up dramatic tension type of, yeah. uh, you know, it's, song. It's called Eye in the Sky. Yeah. Is it, is it from Rocky? Parsons? No, no, That's it's Alan Parsons Rocky. Project. Is it Alan Parsons? Yeah. Yes, it's Alan Parsons it's Project. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so Alan the Parsons Project. in the sky. No, uh, no. Wait a minute. What are we talking about now? Play the okay. song. The Maybe instrument- we got the wrong song. No, right. Eye in the Sky is not that because the Eye I in the Sky, Eye in the Sky. Okay. Looking he, at you. There. That's Alan he Parsons. heard uh, the instrumental song "Serious" by the Alan Parsons Project while he was waiting for a movie to start in the theater. And he thought it would be a great song for a team introduction, so he started using it at Chicago Stadium. Oh, so it's a different song. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can hear, if you listen closely after the introductions, but before the music fades out, you can hear the intro to Eye in the Sky. Uh, So that's interesting. So it's serious. From Alan Parsons Project, and but probably, it does go into I. Yeah, okay. probably on the album it runs together. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, That's awesome. awesome. I can read you blind. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we do have a resident Alan Parsons Project expert. That's right, man. <laughs> I call it the Alan Parsons Project. <laughs> <laughs> Alan right. Parsons Project is a progressive band from 1985. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> what is this? Ass. Ass. That's right. Ass. <laughs> Um, um, okay. So, yes, thank you, uh, uh, Sinflower members yes. for, for doing that. We're going to have a lot of fun when you come out here in March and we're going to be seeing the movie Us together mm-hmm. on opening night. We rented out a theater at our Hollywood 20, our old Hollywood 27, uh, place where we used to work and everything. It's going to be fun. And yeah, you at home who, who are not Sunflowers, not able to attend this event, it's a very small, intimate not sexual event yes uh but you at home can e attend mm-hmm. um and just go to our patreon page patreon.com slash cinema sins and we're going to be doing panels with these people in the audience live podcast recording or live review of the movie us uh and you can watch live while that stuff is happening online if you are a patreon member uh in addition to you'll get three sins videos that week that non-patreon members will never get Yes. Ever. Mm-hmm. That are super fun. That would be super fun. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, now we're going to go back onto our road trip. Road trip. Shotgun. On the road again. The most time-honored tradition of all, the road trip. Oh, the places you'll go. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Um, and we're also, uh, don't worry, we're going to get into some uh, some questions and some recommends and warns and all that, because Utah is a scarce state. It is. I it's got some sure fun it stuff. it is a state. I'm not sure it is either. <laughs> Most states in the West really aren't. They're, I don't know anyone that's ever actually I, been to Utah. I, I still consider most of the Western U.S. the Louisiana Purchase. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah we're gonna be going to utah Ooh. and uh the first one is a is a is a winner uh, 127 hours Ooh. where do you stand on this movie uh it's good it's tense it is a good have you watched it more I haven't than seen once, it. Though? No, I've only is seen this it. Danny the Boyle, one. Danny Boyle, and James Franco. Yeah, I the... never saw it because I knew what it was about. And I didn't want to watch that shit. It is a good movie, though, isn't mm-hmm. it? It's just it's just hard to watch because there's a <sighs> lot of time spent yeah. on the act. Yeah, well, and but most of the time is spent on him trying to figure out how he's going to survive this, mm. and uh, um, and all the and of course because it's a movie, it has to go into these flashbacks about his life and everything. Who knows how much this really actually? You it's know. like for love of the game for climbing. <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, yeah, like some randos show up. Like Kate Mara shows up in this. Yeah. Uh, when he's because he there's the uh, two 
uh backpacking girls that he hangs out with for a little bit and then he goes off on his own yeah because you always run into amber tamblin and, and kate mira you do on the trail you do Utah. absolutely <laughs> and and when you run into those two you separate from them yeah. you, <laughs> you want to go on your own hey look i've always wanted to climb this rock or go caving or whatever the hell you go <laughs> um but uh but yeah uh it's 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 basically a big huge james franco showpiece where mm-hmm. he's basically looking at the camera the whole time and you know what am i going to do and all that need and, and yeah he has to make the ultimate decision you know am i and i do i really think i'm going to get saved out of this situation or do i have to cut my arm off and it, and there's it's interesting when he does come to the realization that there's just no way he's this is the only way out for mm-hmm. him right and of course if you're not familiar it's the story of a climber that does cut his arm off amputate his arm because it's i think it's based on a like a memoir called a rock in a hard place yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that because there's literally no other option. He's pinned by this boulder up against the the, the cliff wall, and there's nothing he Man, can do. There was really no choice either, right? Like if that happened to a dude and he was going to write a book about it, it had to be called Rock and a Hard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? There's exactly. no other option. He could have he could have called it any number of things, but the editors would have been like, Yeah, at first he called it <laughs> only the brave, and then they made him change it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because there's so many things that this guy's got to go through because his pocket knife is not, not sharp enough yep. to cut through his own bone. Yeah, which he has no way of knowing until he starts to cut his arm off. I know. So then he's got to figure out another method and everything. And so for that reason, I also was very uncomfortable watching it. And I haven't gone back to it, but I appreciate it as a really good movie. Mm -hmm. So proceed with caution through your fingers, basically. 127 hours is definitely better than 15 minutes. Yeah, it is, for sure. Yeah, by a factor of several. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. and 88 minutes. (laughs) oh my god yes um i i you know what i don't maybe it's because i was bracing myself for it and i haven't seen it since it came out but i don't remember it being terribly graphic no it's the implications yes. of it. it no it's not it's like never visually. like showing you like it's not like what darren aronofsky would do yeah it. yeah <laughs> no that's that's very true i want to see that <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh, then we have John Woo's Broken Arrow. Yay! Oh, man, oh, man. man Samantha Mathis. Yeah, Samantha <laughs> Mathis. Samantha Mathis, man, for a bit there, she was, she was, she was my gal pal. Yeah, yeah. She was on my laminated it's a list bit of, of a, celebrities. Oh, for sure. Me too. Uh, that little bit of a reteam with her pump up the volume co-star, Christian yeah. Slater in this. Uh, Christian Slater, uh, John Travolta. That was a weird moment where Wu was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to do everything with Travolta. I'm going to do everything with Nicolas Cage. You know, like, <laughs> you know, there was, uh, I, I don't know, but, uh, uh, you say yay in this. I do. This is, I haven't uh, seen this in forever, but I, 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 again, all the John Wu American movies have, except for face off. And I know you're the opposite on face off for me. Uh, uh i don't i don't like i you know i i actually like face off more than i like this and oh, okay. I, I just think it's a bad movie and i enjoy it the same here mm. this is a terrible movie yeah uh it, i just love it would man. you please not mind not firing <laughs> at the nuclear weapon <laughs> travolta is in full-on post pulp fiction like i'm gonna chew into a villain and all that stuff yeah he's it's re- right after it's this the following year yeah this I think. is him completely buying into his own bullshit well and it's right in the heart of christian slater's shot at action stardom too with hard rain and this one i yeah. know <laughs> and he's he's fine he's okay he's, anyone could have played that role yeah, yeah whereas yeah, i think yeah. travolta was very uniquely travolta in this movie i'll tell you who was very howie long <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> howie long listen i saw firestorm oh, in a boy. sneak preview and i didn't mind it mm-hmm. it's not also not a good movie mm-hmm. but i thought he was perfectly fine in it so mm-hmm. i was like maybe he's like the rock and maybe he's able to like get some chops and, and be able to carry a movie he is abysmal in yeah. this man it's it's so bad. I'm still but, waiting for Brian Urlacher to have his film career. Have you seen his hair hat? No. He has a hair hat now. What does that mean? He so he's completely bald, been bald all his career and everything. Yeah. But now he's the the face of a hair regrowth thing in Chicago, and so she, he's on all these billboards and all that stuff. And now he wears this little hair thing around that right. apparently he grew. 
Okay. It's gross. Um, <laughs> by the way, this came out in 96, but February of 96. So it was almost a year after yeah. Pulp Fiction. Frank Whaley from Pulp Fiction's in this, too. Yeah, he's the uh, he's the pursuer. He's the John Cusack Giles character. Giles Prentice. <laughs> um, but yeah. this also has the Hans Zimmer, the that, that, uh, that, that music that later they reused for Scream. Yes. I believe that doom, 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 doom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, doom, yeah, yeah. Doom, yeah. Doom, doom. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Um, cause there, I remember watching Scream and I was like, I've heard this before. And, uh, and Marco Beltrami did the s- soundtrack for Scream, but they credit Hans Zimmer, I believe. I don't know if they credit him in the movie, but, um, I, I maybe even looked at the IMDb and he, he was credited. In and I was Scream? Like, yeah, there's something. Are they using it as Dewey's theme? Dewey's okay, theme. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. Interesting. I never knew that. But this uh, is, uh, this is a, this is on par with a movie that we're going to talk about in a second and with something like Face Off. I would say that because of the performances and how over the top it is, mm-hmm. that, that Face Off is more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, on this one, it's more like Travolta just trying to single-handedly take it over the top. Mm. And Woo, of course. And you know what? As much as I like those movies, I've never been a huge John Woo fan, even his, his like Hong Kong stuff. You've seen always... Hard Boiled. Yes, I've seen Hard Boiled. You've seen The Killer. I like Hard Boiled. Okay. Man, Hard Boiled is a masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. I like it a lot. Okay. Uh, but I, I think overall, I mean, I was about to say the same thing about Danny Boyle, by the way. Um, I like a lot of his stuff, mm-hmm. but a lot of it doesn't connect to me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's just me. There is a lot of good Southwest nature porn in this movie. Yeah. Like good wide vistas of rocks. The <laughs> best one of which is when Travolta flies all the way to fucking Wyoming or like, I guess, maybe northern Utah to kill an acting member of congress oh ex- he's I out there about fly that. fishing <laughs> motherfucker takes a break from his nuclear heist for a, a thing going to denver a train going to denver to take a helicopter talk insult an acting member of congress and him. fucking shoot him in the face jesus well all right maybe <laughs> i need to give this one another look i have a feeling i might enjoy it, it I, I i've seen it a lot yeah <laughs> and i love it for some reason um we're gonna let you just go off on this one simon west's con air oh god wake me when it's over why does nobody like this movie as much as me? <laughs> again i've only seen it the once you only seen it once yep wow but i know that over the years many people like you have picked up on this movie as as a sort of a cult 90s favorite now maybe this is just my my lane is like but i can't say it's always that because there are a lot of shitty trashy action films that i don't like i fucking hate uh armageddon Mm -hmm. um i hate all that michael bay stuff so it's not like it's all that way and i believe this is still the don simpson jerry bruckheimer era where and i don't don simpson died sometime in the 90s so Mm. then it just became bruckheimer after that but uh simpson bruckheimer were behind a lot of these michael bay movies and the simon west stuff and the um there were a couple other uh directors who who, well even tony scott was Mm -hmm. a don simpson jerry bruckheimer Mm. guy uh and somewhere around here it was just jerry bruckheimer but it's all got that same thing i mean they they sort of cultivated michael bay just to do do his worst (laughs) essentially and everybody else who came after michael bay was was basically trying to implement that same style and yeah. so con air has that same kind of you would you would be forgiven for say, thinking this is a michael bay movie i constantly think it's a michael bay movie mm-hmm. because it's it's thrown into all that maybe what it is is the cast this cast you talk about a few good men as being like the the yep. hub of all this casting nick cage john cusack john malkovich buscemi uh ving rames danny trejo uh dave Chappelle, michael t williamson like there's a ridiculous monica amount potter of- <laughs> <laughs> michael <laughs> rooker mm-hmm. uh it's uh it's just so fucking fun it's you know you see bird box and you see malkovich phoning it in you see aragon and you see malkovich phoning it in this would be a perfect excuse for him to phone this in but he doesn't but he 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 lives in cyrus the virus and his character i and think it's awesome. part of honestly i will admit i saw it in theaters i saw i saw it one more time since then hmm. and that was probably 15 years ago but i know for a fact what i hated most was nicholas cage's accent it's awful 
<laughs> but <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of Nicolas Cage performances where his his accent is off. I just well, you know he doesn't need that accent. There's yeah. nothing about his character that needs the accent. Why yeah. couldn't someone have said Nick? It's not working. Yeah, yeah. Just use your normal voice. Well, I, you got a long hair in this one. You didn't have that last movie. <laughs> just let that be your thing. He's um, he's. I think it, it, this is part of his self-described uh, California Klaus Kinski type of thing. He thinks that he's got to have this accent. Otherwise, it's not absolutely a caricature. You know, it's just mm. kind of a character. Mm. Even though he's in a fucking wife beater and he's got the little stringy things yeah. fall- flowing from his head. Yeah, uh, yeah it's... It, it's one of those, you know how something can be so offensive, you kind of feel, feel a tingle in your nuts? <laughs> All the time. Yes. <laughs> when he says, put the bunny back in the bag, I get that little, little, little nut deal. <laughs> Maybe it's just mine. It's, it's yours. You got special sensitive, nuts. Sensitive. Cameron Poe, that's his name. Yep. Uh, now I, Cameron Poe Dameron? I think... Yeah. You, I, this would be a recommend with with the caution that it's not a great movie. It's just fun. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, uh, along the same lines, almost the core. Oh God. <laughs> which is more, I guess, the deep impact Armageddon, whatever kind of. This genre. came <laughs> on a month or two ago. Yes, I saw I, it. I decided to watch just just a little bit. The fe- the effects. <laughs> On the core of the earth outside their craft are among the worst effects I've ever seen in my life. Mm. I, it's almost laughable they distributed this. Yes. Without just burning it or improving it. <laughs> it looks like it uh, looks, what you draw on picture pages. It's really like fucking, that. it's like some light bright shit out there. <laughs> I mean, it, you had a laughable premise enough to begin with. I don't know why you had to put windows on that shit. I don't know why you had to give me any exterior shots of that thing going through rainbow water or whatever the fuck. <laughs> Everything about this movie should be ashamed. It really is. Everything. I mean, and it, this has also got a pretty good cast. You know, it's got Delroy Lindo, Stanley Tucci, Hillary Swank, Hillary Swank, Aaron Eckhart. Aaron Eckhart. Uh, I was surprised because I remember kind of liking this movie when it came out. And I, too, saw it about a month ago, and I was shocked oh, about man. how awful it is, like, uh, start to finish. It's, yeah. it's crazy. And, like, this is one of those movies that I'm always certain is a 1990s movie. <laughs> like, like you, you say the core, I go, 1998. Yeah. And it's like Event Horizon <laughs> and all these that were in that same era. But this was 2003. Yep. Um, and I can't remember if I even saw this movie. I would advise you strongly to never, ever, even if we sin it, assign that shit to someone else like yeah, me. Somebody who's already has already been, been stained. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's that bad. It's, oh, man. It's, it's all of, Bru- uh, not Bruckheimer, and Roland Emmerich's worst tendencies rolled into one single screenplay <clears throat> with uh, obviously no budget for effects. Yeah, it's 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 aggressively gross. Who is the, the, the guy on the ground? Uh, the person that they... Uh, oh, oh, Bruce Greenwood is Commander Iverson. Yeah, yes, he is. He's 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 working his way up to president. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite there yet. Uh, yeah. uh, DJ Qualls is in this too. Alfred Woodard is the the mission commander. Yeah, That's yeah. She says something. Angela Bassett turned that role down. <laughs> so so she also says something terse and then walks out. <laughs> uh, and then we have uh, Fletch. Oh, uh, oh, Fletch is classic at this point. I love it. Fletch is great. This is this is. Chevy Chase had had a hard time, I believe, during, uh, getting into movies that that anybody responded to. Mm. Uh, he had done stuff like Modern Problems, which has got it's got it's it's pretty funny, mm-hmm. but it's it's not great or anything. And he he'd been trying. I think he was in Caddyshack, but like it wasn't his movie, right? Even uh, though he wanted it to be, yeah. Um, but uh, Fletch finally got him in a starring role, and it's just Chevy Chase being his funniest self nobody else could do this no no didn't they try to remake this or something they like talked that about yeah it. there was a kevin smith rewrite uh, or not a rewrite but a reboot that was going to happen at some point and it was called i can't remember it had a weird title like but uh jason lee was going to do it right jason lee was going to be in it yeah and fletch lives that's a sequel yeah. that's the sequel so the, this was fletch something else or fletch again or something it had another they, there was a title <laughs> you, you can't do it this is one of it's like i don't know Peter Sellers in uh, Pink Panther. That's why those Steve Martin things are just so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Because he, Peter Sellers is 
Inspector Clouseau, right? Yeah. Um, and so nobody else can do Fletch the way uh, Chevy Chase did Fletch. Maybe Joel McHale, given what he did. In yeah. Stupid and feudal, or feudal and stupid gesture. But this is the type, I mean, yeah, this is the type of movie where, you know, uh, Fletch will have sex with a girl and she dies and like, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, she dies, she, she gets murdered or whatever. And then like, uh, uh, they, they, when they, when he finds out that she's been murdered and everything, someone asks, asks her, was she feeling well last night? And he goes, felt great to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so great. <laughs> um, oh man. He, he, just a lot of that like quick wordplay type of stuff. And it's great. It's a great, great comedy. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's got, it's, it's a, on its face, it's like a murder mystery type of thing, mm-hmm. and it's got a nice plot that moves along. It's got it's an investigative reporting type of piece. Gina Davis shows up. Yeah. This is what is her name? It's a it's a masculine. Uh, <laughs> it's a masculine name. Larry <laughs> yeah. is her name. It's uh, it's called it, her name is Larry. Larry, that is yeah. a masculine name. This is what happens, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just it's delightful. This gets a highest recommend. It doesn't get talked about, about like the uh, the classics of Caddyshack and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's every bit as. You funny think it might as be that. too much for some people, though. How much? How much Chevy Chase this is like? Some people just don't kind of get into this kind of humor. Yes, sure. Yeah, I, I, I think maybe it's a it's a it's a it's a one note performance mm-hmm. that can get annoying but then also you've got all the different characters that he's playing and stuff like that he's the master of disguise and all that mm-hmm. kind of breaks up the monotony so yeah prob- probably I, this is just my speed this is my lane yeah. love it uh then a huge one indiana jones and the last crusade uh now yes this is all just when it's uh, river phoenix playing uh indiana jones at the very beginning of it and everything however you know, I think when you're when you've been planning these out, you've been taking some out of some bigger states and, mm-hmm. and applying them to the ones like this where they don't have that that much. Uh, but uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, great Indiana Jones movie. It's the last good one. Uh, Did we ever come up with a definitive ranking of no. of what we? No, what we think? I mean for me, I know I know where Jeremy will go on this, but for me, it'd be just it'd just be to the top two switched. I think. Uh, Raiders is first, and then Last Crusade, and then uh, Temple of Doom, then Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah, and your your Last Crusade is number one, right? Yeah, I like it. I like watching it the best. I um, do too. I, I, I think it, it's definitely uh, for a wider audience because because uh, both Temple of Doom and Raiders have some of the stuff that I would call ickier. Like mm-hmm. the snakes, especially the, Temple of Doom, the brains yeah. and the, the heart, yeah, yeah, and and this one doesn't have anywhere near as much of that. It's it's more of a pure archaeological adventure, um, and it's just it's just wheelhouse, man, wheelhouse. Sean Connery has, has never been better cast in any role He's in history. Perfect. He's great, um, and yeah, River Phoenix is the young indie. Mm. Uh, the, the the that tank sequence will always be top three classic spielberg for mm-hmm. um so yeah i love it uh but i don't i like raiders of lost ark a yep. lot i'm not a big fan of temple of doom <clears throat> well yeah. harrison ford fucks the shit out of that nazi doesn't he, <laughs> he <laughs> i was just saying his dad both do do yeah, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> no it's funny because that you sex talking about scene ilsa, ilsa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that sex scene is so violent and yeah. like he's like she's chewing on his lip and shit like that i'm like yeah. man they're about to have some nazi sex yeah they are it's fucked up yeah yeah, yeah. archaeologists man they well he doesn't well, when he, he doesn't, look like harrison he Ford, get, though. Yeah. <laughs> that that brings up an interesting debate though barrett he didn't know she was a nazi of course, well although uh his dad did know that she was a nazi and still fucked him, <laughs> well <laughs> Maybe not before. Did he find out? Is that I what he says? She, I think he finds out later too. Does he say that he 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 figured it out during or something like that? Oh, uh, doesn't that know. Something, I don't know. I can't, I can't remember if it was during or not. So he so, didn't know ahead of time. But uh, I don't. I wouldn't think so. That should be in the middle of sex. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> oh, this girl's shit. a Nazi. She's a Nazi. <laughs> well, this do is I ex- finish or not? That's exactly what that. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I just had sex. Song is all about that Lonely Island <laughs> yeah, song. That's right. He's like, I think she was a racist. <laughs> Still counts. 
Um, oh Jesus Christ! No, I love this too, and uh, and I and it, and and it does what uh, Raiders did, where it starts off with something you know, it starts off small, but then you realize, okay, that's going to be this big thing at the end that he has to go through, and uh, I love those little booby traps at the end. Mm-hmm. I think he should be dead. Yes, many times, especially after that that fall. When he fall yeah, when he goes, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> he puts all his weight on that yeah. shit. <laughs> but I love how it's all edited, though, uh, uh, when, because uh, uh, Sean Connery is like, you know, um, he's been shot and he's, they're tending to him and he goes, but in the Hebrew alphabet. Je- Jehovah starts with an I. Yeah. And then Harrison Ford's like, J. <laughs> <laughs> those, uh, those effects still hold up pretty well, too. Yeah. Well, even though, do. yeah. Yeah. Even though there's some CG ish type of thing happening there, especially when you're the blades like, go through. Oh, yeah. You're not talking about like melting old man. No, no, no. Yeah. That, that still holds up, too. It holds up well enough. Holds up as good as anything else from that era. Mm hmm. Better than a lot. Yep. Oh, I love this movie so much. Yeah, it's great. Um, oh, yeah, and it also, by the way, had that big Pepsi tie-in. Do you remember the Pepsi ads where like people would go? the The, the commercial was they get they go into the cave where the the night the Knight Templar guy is or whatever. Oh yeah, and uh, and so they uh, so they uh, they whenever they I think I don't know if they they do the chose poorly. But when they get the pet, when they get the Pepsi, it's chose like he's wisely. chose wisely or whatever. Oh, That's, I don't remember that. Yeah. It's hilarious. That's pretty good marketing. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Uh, then need for speed. Oh, Jesus. This is, uh, the Aaron, um, uh, Aaron Paul, Aaron Paul. Paul, uh, fast and furious try. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of just sterile. Mm hmm. It's like they were going through the motions of doing what they think the fast and furious movies do to make their movies. Okay. Pretty girl. This color car, chase at this point in the movie, uh, revenge angle, double cross, boom, we got it. And no, you didn't catch any of it. There's no magic in this movie at all. Yeah, it sucks. Mm -hmm. You want to hear the back half of this cast, though? All right, so you got Aaron Paul, who was... Hot. It, Breaking Bad was still on the air at this point. No, right? I think right it, was after. I think it was after. Uh, Dominic Cooper. All right. Imogen Poots. All right. Kid Cuddy. What? But the last three, Rami Malek. Michael Keaton, Dakota Johnson. Mm, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Need for Speed. Yeah. I don't even remember Michael Keaton being in there. I don't. Well, he, he is nowhere in the poster. He's probably the voice of Kit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, no, I never saw this and uh, probably never will. Yeah. Um, there's a Breaking Bad movie starring him in the works, right? Yeah. And they just said the other day that it's uh, official. It's going to star him and it's going to take place after the series okay so why i'm still seeing headlines about cranston maybe appearing i do not know i guess probably flashbacks. flashback i don't know what um, do you what do you think of this idea I'm, I'm over it man i don't i don't need all the stories told yeah the, the, he him driving away and cackling with with anxiety laughter is it's everything to yep. me. The f- uh, this would be like making a sequel to Inception, and the opening scene shows you whether or not that goddamn top falls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's It's true. like, I think I even wrote in a Sins video recently, it's like movies want to stamp out imaginative thinking as opposed to, like, encouraging it. Mm. I, just, I don't need to know what happened to his ass. I, I, I appreciate Vince Gilligan. He has earned the right to do this. I, as a fan of Breaking Bad, I don't. I don't need this story told. I'm not excited about it. You, I, I, it's going to be you two and a couple other people I really trust telling me it's an A plus before I'll even check it out. And I and I will. I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm so addicted to that method of presentation that I'm I'm it's on board. So hard though to make a, a theatrical release based on a TV show, even a good one. Well, they're not. Has it ever been successful? I'm. <laughs> you know what? Gunpoint. I can't think of one, but. Uh, like everything that has ever seemed to come out, uh, a movie based on a, a TV series is usually generally good, bad. Uh, like, um, it, the Sex and the City movies. I mean, look, yeah. those are, those are, those are bad. I mean, the, the show was fine. I didn't, yeah, have, I, so. I like the show. I, I watched the show quite a bit, mm. but those movies are, are just god awful. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times they come, uh, and and I'm not a big fan of the Simpsons movie either. Right. Um. It's got its moments, but uh, they always come way too late. Mm-hmm. 
where the writers have exhausted all their ideas. It's like, it's, it's completely counterintuitive. And, uh, yeah, and th- these guys probably do have a story for him that, that might work in an episode yeah. or something like that, but a full on theatrical release. And they just, those movies never seem to shake them just being long TV episodes. Well, and we're going to see another test of this with Walking Dead because once Rick was written off yeah they announced they're gonna make three rick centric walking dead movies mm. and at least at least the first release that i read was that they were thinking about making them theatrical releases as though as though someone who holds the rights wants like sees the annual horror movie talk and was like we gotta get in on some of that theatrical <laughs> horror even though we already completely fucking own television horror let's make walking dead movies alan i bet you can guess if i'll be there yeah yeah <laughs> And just a couple more popped in my head. X Files was not good. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, that Entourage. movie was so disappointing. Yeah, so- South Park we all love, but yeah. it was so early. It was in their early run. in their run. Yeah, that's, that's the, only the way difference. To do it. Yeah, I mean, and the Simpsons movie that they had been talking about that for years, yeah. and then it was like twenty seasons in, they decided to go ahead and do it, and it's like, all right, you guys have exhausted everything, and this is a got its moments, but damn, it's just not what it probably could have been um so yeah not excited but i'll watch it yeah <laughs> that uh that female version of street hawk that came out last summer was pretty good mission impossible falling <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i agree that's a bold choice to take street the sixth hawk. movie of a franchise and call it the adaptation of a tv show and gender swap <laughs> from uh, like 1989 yeah from the yeah from the 80s uh then we have the, i believe barrett's the only one who has seen this in the room slc punk I still haven't seen this. I want to see it. All right, look, this movie is gold. It's weird because I think it came out in uh, 1999. Yeah, um, so it, it it's weird because the actors are very 90s, mm-hmm. but it takes place in 1985. So there's a lot of references to Reagan and rednecks and you know, mods and punks and all that different type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but because of that, it kind of makes it a little more timeless. Um, this is a movie that I quote constantly. Uh, there's a couple of lines. Till Schweiger plays this almost Tommy Wiseau type of character Mm -hmm. where he's rich and he's got a mansion that he just hangs out in, hangs out with younger people and nobody knows how he got his shit. Mm-hmm. So like it's somebody he, he basically you know he's like ah this is a laser disc it's like uh, they put the whole movie on the disc and then he gets bored after doing some drugs and he's like I say we steal a car and they go out <laughs> and they steal a car and they try to dump it into the Salt Lake but it doesn't sink because mm. it's ah, full of salt yes. so he's like sink goddamn you and he starts shooting it <laughs> <laughs> this movie is so great Matthew Lillard plays. This super brilliant dude that is throw actively throwing his life away on purpose mm-hmm. uh, just because of the punk ethos that he believes in. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, his dad wants to get him into Harvard Law School, who is uh, Christopher McDonald, by the way, mm-hmm. um, oh. Shooter McGavin. Oh. And uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's it's just perfectly paced. Matthew Lillard is playing a narrator, basically. He and his friend, Heroin Bob, who doesn't do any drugs. That's why they call him Heroin Bob. Uh, are the protagonists and they're nihilistic they're punks they love music they love being in their own scene and it it takes a very very dramatic turn uh somewhere in the middle of it and it pays off perfectly all right also jason siegel is in this movie very young jason siegel about like 18 19 years old Mm -hmm. who plays like uh, like a like a badass like he's he's all nerdy and everything he's got glasses on but if any fights break out like happens all the time in this movie he's the guy that beats ass no oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge recommend all, all right. right uh then vertical limit you know climbing <laughs> mountains is fucked up yo yeah why would you <laughs> did you see this is this the one with uh chris, chris o'donnell chris o'donnell yeah i saw it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah he does take his shirt off yes uh, i remember the trailer for this because I feel like there's a jump in this movie that's an impossible Neo type jump that he makes, and the trailer was all about the doom, 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 jumping. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. give a shit. Mm-hmm. Even that movie Everest that came out two years ago, which is pretty decent, can't fucking stand that shit. You want to know why? why? I don't have. I don't understand anybody that would climb that shit. I don't understand you. I don't understand you. Go, is it the ascension or is I don't, it the? I mean, I'm I'm not judging you. I'm not saying you're bad. I'm just saying I don't understand. Especially once you start getting to like Everest, where it's like you either make it. 
or you die. Yeah. And it's like negative 30 degrees the whole time. That doesn't sound like fun. That doesn't sound like fun. And what am I going to do? I'm going to climb this thing. And like, I did it. I climbed that mountain that 1,300 other people climbed before me. I'm special. <laughs> well, especially considering in uh, the book Into Thin Air, they 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 basically call one one route the like the goat route or something because it's easy now it's like easy to climb everest um (laughs) yeah apparently it is like uh and especially if you've got uh trained people who just sort of help you up the mountain and everything you know it's not a big deal anymore but uh i I wouldn't do it no um uh i I will say that this doesn't this doesn't subtract from your your thought but uh you either go up and you decide that you can't summit it you can do that too. Oh yeah, and then come back down. You can come down like there. That that's what into thin air is basically about. Is that they get up to the the next highest point, and there's this big storm coming, and the guys the 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 guy part of the one of the teams is like we're gonna we're gonna beat that storm up there, and that's yeah. where the problems. Yeah. Is that a documentary? No. Uh, well, it, I believe they did make an adaptation of this, but hmm. John Krakauer wrote the novel. Or oh, not okay. the no- novel. It's 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 based on a real thing. They yeah. had a, they had an uh, an, an IMAX crew out there, and they were shooting oh. stuff. And, and that they, was com- they did have a documentary based on that footage. But yeah, I'm talking about the Jason Clark movie, and Krakow yeah. is a character in that movie. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. same expedition that oh. that fictionalized version is talking about. Um, so yeah, uh, basically, if there's a movie about Everest, it's all about Into Thin Air, huh. basically. Yeah, I'm, I'm making. But that. yeah, that, okay. that that IMAX thing is. I guess it's on a completely separate. Either they had a different uh, timing than the, those two crews did, or they were on another side of the mountain, or whatever. That that is not a that is not a blow by blow. Of what happens into right. thin air? But uh, uh, anyway, that has nothing to do with Utah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> vertical limit does. But vertical limit does. That sucks. This movie sucks. Is Robin ass. Tunney in this? Yeah, I think so. Yes, yeah. I, like I, the- I probably know more, but that's already probably more than I should remember about this movie. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure she's in it. I'm pretty sure there's nothing surprising. They get up there. There's a rescue. Oh no, some chap lips. Yeah, yeah. Look at how enormous the Wikipedia plot summary is. For I this honestly movie. wish we could like standardize that because sometimes I'll go to like a Wikipedia page for a plot synopsis and it'll be one fucking sentence. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. I'll go and I'll get it's six vertical. pages. <laughs> yeah. It depends on, it depends on uh, who's, uh, who's editing the page, right? Somebody, yeah. the, the director Tony probably wrote yeah. this one. Yeah, <laughs> probably Robert. did. And it was, Let me tell uh, you about this shit. <laughs> it was uh, Bill Paxton and Scott Glenn is in this. Oh. It always feels like Scott Glenn is in these, uh, expedition he's in movies. everything yeah he's literally in every single movie he's probably got 160 170 credits i just i just remember isn't scott glenn in the right stuff yep but uh-huh. he's not playing john glenn. he's not playing john and glenn. It drove me crazy yeah as a kid. well and uh the guy uh um it's um it's sam shepherd doesn't play alan shepherd <laughs> <laughs> yeah you are probably right it says 97 but a lot of that is in tv so per episode he would have o- over that yeah well i mean it, it's it's less than i thought it would be although do you get individual credits for each episode no no not just for each they, project. if you were in that show you that's your that's one, one credit. credit uh so like that's why you'll run down somebody like philip baker hall who was in like one episode of like seinfeld and stuff like that and you know he that counts as one of his mm. bookman the name is um, bookman <laughs> maybe that's how you get your jolly Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> uh then we cap out this list with the wizard oh, um oh jesus i saw this uh i believe this movie came out in what 90 89 89 so i was 12 i saw this movie did not have an nes Ooh. me neither um uh but all the people around me had nes's mm-hmm. uh anyway i i I watched this and, and got quite into it for some reason. Uh, it's only later on that you realize that the wizard was just like how Transformers the movie was, or the Transformers the, Transformers the, movie, the movie was. Uh, it was a an entire extended commercial for Super Mario Three. Yep, mm-hmm. Nintendo and Super Mario Three, and uh, and even as a kid though, because they're because they're bringing they're bringing this. Uh, it's Fred Savage and this one girl, and then it's his. It's another Lucas. It's not Lucas Haas. It's Lucas somebody else. Luke. Luke Edwards. Luke Edwards. They're bringing across, and uh, Luke Edwards is like a video game prodigy kid yep. or whatever. 
and uh they 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 have to they're going cross country i think it's like all the way across the country to california to play in this yeah. tournament a game that no one has ever played before <laughs> super mario 3 and like while they're playing super mario 3 everybody's a fucking wizard at it <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, like it yeah. says yes and just like the title promises i'm like you don't know anything about this game. How are you, how are you getting through all this stuff? And they're all like, yeah, be sure to get the secret whistle. And like, how do you know about the secret whistle? <laughs> Wasn't the glove. Yes. A, the power glove. The power oh glove. yeah. Part yeah, of this movie yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Oh, I only saw it once. And, and it was just that it, this is one of those rare cases where our very small age difference. Cause I was, I was 12 in 87 mm-hmm. and did get an NES. Yeah. And so then this movie came out when I was 15 and I just thought it was trash. <laughs> I just thought it was stupid. But not that doesn't that doesn't make me better than you. If I'd have seen it when I was 12, I probably would have been like, "Yeah! <laughs> Woohoo!" <laughs> but I think even 15-year-old me was like, it "Kind of feels like they're selling me something." Yeah. Well, man, I was 9. Oh and boy. And so I was there could not be a bigger uh Nintendo boner than what was growing in my pants. <laughs> mhm. This, even though I didn't have one, and probably largely because I didn't have one, this game looked perfect. Yeah. I wanted everything about it. Mm-hmm. I still love this game, by the way. Super mm-hmm. Mario 3? Yes. That game's my favorite it. of all the Mario yes, games. Yes, me too. And God, I could not wait to do this. I was I was quivering. <laughs> this is the one that introduced the raccoon suit, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that game the best. And no, this is before Yoshi. Yoshi was Super Mario World. Uh, God, so awesome. Yeah. It was um, so awesome. But uh, it also has uh, Christian Slater in it. It does. And it has Jenny Lewis, who uh, later formed uh, Rilo Kiley. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the indie band and was in the Postal Service mm-hmm. with Ben Gibbard. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Portions for Foxes. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. Rilo Kiley's song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's pretty. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I'll, I'll take your word for it. I will tell you, when that... Girlfriend Experience show came out starring Riley Keough. Oh, yeah. I confused her with Riley Kylo and for about six months thought that they were the same. <laughs> the end. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, every time I hear Rilo Kylo, I think of Riley Keough. <laughs> It's just there's too there's too many Riley case. No, running down the others here. I haven't seen Bust Up, the Marilyn Monroe movie. Me neither. Uh, have you? You? I definitely haven't seen it. Uh, Desperate Hours, Mickey Rourke, Anthony Hopkins. I haven't seen this either. It's another one of those hours and desperate movies. It, 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 it another example well, of fucking yeah, name your fucking. Yeah, you you might have never been here. Yes. <laughs> Desperate measures, <laughs> yeah. extreme desperation. Right. There's all sorts of extreme <laughs> and desperate. I've never been here. <laughs> you desperately might have never been here. That's right. Uh, I haven't seen this. Uh, the Elizabeth Smart story. I mean, I know enough about it to know that it that was fucked up. What a horrible, horrible fucking story. Yeah. Horrible. And I'll tell you what. They bring this poor lady out every time there's a child abduction. Yep. And they're like, what does Elizabeth Smart have to say Although- about it? Although... Don't don't you think that she kind of uh, is still in that education mode, though, where she doesn't mind doing it? Because I feel like she does come out and talk about this a lot, but I think that's mainly because she's she wants to. Is that her thing? I think so. I she, think she's oh, leaned okay. into it a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, well, there was a Hallmark version of her story where it's half dramatic. Re- it might be this. It half be dramatic this. retelling and half the real her on camera talking about her remembering the experiences and then it cuts back to the dramatic reenactment. yeah that's what this is yeah um so i think she's leaned into it a little bit she is the most high profile of course obviously it turned out quote unquote well for her because she was found and rescued and all that stuff so there aren't many options of of women that have survived this that they can tell that mm-hmm. so yeah i guess I, I i got the impression that they were like oh call her up child abduction but, but you're you're probably right just like any of those stories you always fear the absolute worst because mm-hmm. they because they had a big you know that was on the news like 24 hours uh and uh they kept showing the same footage of her and these videos and stuff and how many years was it before they found her that wasn't that's the thing she wasn't gone that long it was just a few months i think it was a year or somewhere in that ballpark because there i was just gonna say she's more high profile but there was somebody a couple years ago that had been gone 18 years and showed back up mm-hmm. um so it's, it's odd because i remember feeling like she got away r- like relatively 
quickly. I, it was the news cycle constantly, mm -hmm. yeah. but I don't feel like it was more than a year or two that she was yeah, gone. Yeah, it may not have been that long. Captivity lasted approximately nine months before she was discovered. Yeah, all right. Okay. So. <clears throat> um, then uh, the Hitchhiker. I've never seen this. I've seen The Hitcher. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, the, the C. Thomas in, Owl. Who's in The Hitchhiker? The Hitchhiker uh, stars Gil First. Never nope. seen it. Shaley Scott. Uh -uh. You can stop. <laughs> um... <laughs> It's like the, <laughs> it's the reverse of the Leonard Malton game where if you say too many, I don't want it. Uh, the recent movie, The Mountain Between Us, the Kate Winslet, Idris Elba. This has been on recently. <sighs> it's just. Did you see it? I've seen parts of it. It's just blah. They uh they uh have the sex, right? They do have the sex and then it fucks up both their lives. Like they can't be together and they can't be apart. That's basically the gist. This is after they've gotten past the mountain between, or or is it a metaphorical mountain that's between them? Well, they crash on a literal mountain, but the mountain then becomes metaphorical, I imagine. But yes, it's so a they're together. Mountain. Yes, and then the sex makes the survival mountain. survival sex. They're dead for sure. Actually, they're dead for sure is the only reason they even do it. Um, and then something happens that makes them realize, oh, there is one more way out, blah, 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 blah. And they get out. She has a significant other. She tries to go back to. Can't. He can't let go of her. And it's just kind of this thing where we're, we're tied together forever because mm -hmm. of this tragic event we went through together. But we can't actually be. I didn't like it at all. But it's not good. It sounds like an interesting premise, actually. It's based on a book. I imagine the book's better. I didn't find I didn't find anything in this. Like, there's better survival in a snowy environment shit in the gray. Mm -hmm. There's better, like, love in unfortunate circumstances shit in a, a half a dozen other movies. It's just one of those movies. I was like, why did you even do this? Why does this even need to be made? This does prove your theory, though, that people on Naked have been afraid of bad sex. <laughs> it's the same situation, right? Exactly. <laughs> Identical. Uh, I had forgotten this had come out. There's a sequel to Donnie Darko called S. Darko, starring uh, Deve Chase, uh, who is who was the sister uh, in the first Donnie Darko, and she's best known as being uh, uh, the chick in the ring. The um, oh, the climbs out of the TV, climbs out of the TV, and everything. Samara, right? Samara. Uh, but uh, yeah, they made a sequel. It, uh, Richard Kelly is not even a part of it. No, uh, and it's got a 3.6 on the IMDb. So I haven't heard one positive thing about this movie mm -hmm. and it's a shame because i mean that's a universe that i would love to explore more yeah if sure. richard kelly was a part of it yeah uh and then silent night deadly night part two yeah um <laughs> also a 3.6 on the imdb <laughs> um uh i don't know if i saw the first one i definitely <laughs> haven't seen this one I think I've seen the first one. Uh, this is 1987, so mm -hmm. I think the first one was around 85 or 86. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't seen this, and, and nor would I want to. Anyway, yeah. that's Utah. That's Utah. <laughs> Listen, there's some choice. Fletch, SLC Punk, obviously Indiana Jones and the, the Last Crusade, um, and then my trashy action stuff. I think there's some choice cuts in Utah. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering... It did, I don't know if you ran across this, but I was wondering if Orgasmo may have had some some basis in Utah since Trey Parker and Matt Stone, or not Matt Stone, Trey Parker, and um, it's the guy who plays uh, the dude they always abuse in basketball. But but in Orgasmo, they're they're Mormon missionaries, so they're in Los Angeles. They're in they're L.A. the whole time. Yes, although and I was what I was going to look up was Cannibal the movie, the musical. Oh yeah, uh, because they are it's like the donner party and i think they may have trekked through utah uh, there's a lot of colorado i'm seeing but i don't know if it was based in colorado yeah, they start in brigham canyon utah but then they go to to colorado and it's actually have you ever seen uh cannibal the music i haven't i've seen i've seen the trailer for it which is pretty funny because yeah because i think it's trey parker looking at a bone and he's like oh and he goes into a song <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some great music in that it's huh. hilarious it's not as good as south park or mm -hmm. anything like that or even team america really for that matter but it's fun i've heard i've heard it's pretty good yeah all right uh let's get into our uh, recommends and warns totes amaze balls they're great it won the academy award oh for what for best movie ever made yeah we've been backed up with this shit yeah now we're gonna have a 
colonoscopy. Yes. <laughs> or an enema. Enema. Or an x lab. Both. <laughs> All the above. We're going to be less backed up after this. That's right. A mm. little bit. Yeah. Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Barrett knows this from having sat in the uh, Sift Pop uh, podcast that we did a couple of days ago. But happy death day to you. Ooh. I cannot wait to see this. Fantastic. Oh, Ooh. man. Fantastic. I was very worried about this. Mm. Uh, watching the first. Uh, 10 minutes or so because movies like this uh that just sort of you know come back and you're like okay what are they what can they possibly do they right off the bat tell you there's an explanation for what happened in the first one and i'm like oh no <laughs> oh no here's the explanation we're not gonna like this and uh turns out really like this mm. really enjoyed their explanation of it um and it puts Tree in a completely different uh, scenario. Uh, whereas the first one is she's trying to avoid a killer each time she wakes up and everything. Uh, this one is more about how does... And I don't want to go too far because it would be spoilery. Uh, but uh, it's a, I'll just say it's just a different situation this time. Mm-hmm uh and uh she has a big decision to make what what negative i have read about this movie seems to be people that are upset it leaned away from horror and more into sci-fi yeah and when i've read that i was like boy that would be right up my alley exactly. i like the first one <laughs> and so i guess it's maybe horror fans that feel like their genre got abandoned a bit mm -hmm. and those are the only ones i've seen that have negative things to say about this i'm movie. glad you bring yeah. this up because had they done this in a horror way would have been awful yeah and there are horror moments in this where there's still a baby killer and all the a killer dressed up as a baby <laughs> <laughs> dolly parton is a baby killer <laughs> i was wondering where they came from um, <laughs> um, oh my god there's still a killer dressed up as a baby in this and there's still a sort of a whodunit and there is uh, a lot of there's still that element in it, uh, and it follows along somewhat closely to what happened in the first one. Had it been that, and they could have gone this direction, mm. they could have just said, "All right, well, she's in a different situation now, but let's do this with the killer instead," mm -hmm. and it would have been awful. Mm. They did a an absolute perfect job, and if you don't like it because they didn't lean horror. I'm just saying, thank God they didn't do that. Mm. Thank yeah. God. All right. Uh, I think they're going to broaden their audience with that, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just by that alone. There's a funny moment uh, when we were uh, talking to Aaron about this movie where I was like, so please tell me there's 50 cent music in this now. Because the first one famously had the trailer where she woke up to in the club mm -hmm. every time. And it wasn't in the movie. It was that happy, happy birthday or whatever it was. And so I asked him if there's any in this movie. And I get this blank stare. And I was like, he said, well, I don't think so. And then Chris said, no, there's no 50 cent. And then I realized why I'm getting the blank stares that he hadn't seen a trailer for, oh, yeah. for either of this. So yeah. I had no idea that yeah. In the Club was supposed to be in there. Yeah. So well, it doesn't make any And sense. it was funny, too, because he actually did go into the theater with the trailers when Happy Death Day was going on. <laughs> but we were in a dine-in theater, so he was looking at his menu the whole time. <laughs> and, like, there was that... that, uh, that um, octavia spencer movie ma uh -huh. trailer came on and i was about to turn to him and say yeah octavia spencer looks pretty fucked up in this or whatever and i was like wait wait a minute he doesn't want to know he doesn't want to know anything. that's crazy he doesn't want to know anything about the movie he is he's committed yeah oh yeah he mm -hmm. is and i think i used to give him a hard time about it <laughs> but now i i, I get it mm -hmm. because I, I i can't ever get myself there like the the, the, the movies that I'm excited about. I can't avoid watching the trailer. I can't mm. stop that finger from clicking the mouse. And then for me, I feel like the trailers still expose me to movies I would never have had on my radar. Sure. Um, and uh, but man, I do admire it, and it does take a lot of willpower. I no think. kidding. So, well, yeah, and he's got a he's got a, you know the when we watched um, the first one, uh, uh, Alita, um, he was just outside 
and because uh, it just happened to have a, a a nice little lobby right outside the IMAX that he could sit down and just listen. But most of the time, I, 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 if I've ever been to a movie with him, he's like standing somewhere close so that he can hear the trailers yeah. and then and then go in at the right time. Yeah. Hmm. Dedication. All right. So we do. Uh, is it to me now? Yep. We'll come mm-hmm. back around to do warns. Okay. So I have a wreck of warn. All right. For my recommendation. I am. I am having a journey, people, of exploring old inappropriate clint eastwood movies <laughs> <laughs> and i i talked several weeks ago about that one of those famous westerns where he like slaps a woman and then kind of half like rapes her but she's moaning with pleasure and the whole scene was very uncomfortable the outlaw josie wales yeah, on it yeah. uh, i was no it was not that but it was something the same general the man with no face on his <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, so <laughs> isn't I, that the uh, the Mel Gibson? Yeah, yes. man without a face. <laughs> I also I also talked once about the Iger Sanction. This is a movie in the seventies where Clint Eastwood is a climber right. and an assassin. I had only ever watched that post his arriving at the climbing resort, but I recently had the opportunity to watch it from the beginning. And as I told you guys at dinner the other night, there's there's a, a black stewardess in the the plane in an opening scene that he flirts with. Her name is Jemima. Yeah. And then he takes her home and they make a couple of very casual and appropriate jokes about rape. Uh. Like, I used to think I was done doing that. And then they kiss and have sex. Super raw. Oh. But I want to talk to you guys today about the beguiled. <laughs> I, j- I joked recently about having just learned that Sofia Coppola's Beguiled right. was a remake yeah, yeah. of a Clint Eastwood film. Mm-hmm. I have now seen this Clint Eastwood film. I may be the only guy in the room that's seen both versions of the Beguiled <laughs> sure. or either version of the Beguiled. Um, and uh, this this comes it's a record warrant for many many reasons. Uh, both Clint Eastwood and Colin Farrell in either version play a northern soldier found in the south by a girl who goes to a women's boarding school oh okay it's and not they, a family it's a boarding school no it's all okay. all women and they and they they bring him in and they decide they're it's not right to turn him over to the southern troops while he's so injured we're going to nurse him back to health first mm-hmm. and in both versions of the story there are some flirtations and then eventually one of the girls who lives there goes to have sex with him but finds him having sex with one of the younger girls that lives there yeah pushes him down some stairs, breaks his leg, his leg gets amputated, and he thinks it's because the headmistress wanted to sleep with him and he turned her down. It's a fucked up movie. I really can't even encourage you watch the Sofia Coppola version. But what was revealed to me watching the Clint Eastwood version is it leans hard into kind of the skeezy, sweaty, salacious South kind of element. (laughs) So, like, there's one girl in this version who clearly has had all the sex and she's just <laughs> coming on to him constantly, constantly. But whereas Colin Farrell was just kind of talking to people and eventually had sex with one of them, Clint Eastwood is actively flirting with every single woman in this building, <laughs> actively making out with as many as he can. Um, and again, hard worn because the opening scene, he's found by a 12 year old girl and the Confederate soldiers are marching nearby. And to keep her quiet, he says, well, that's old enough for kisses. And he kisses her. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then the soldiers are gone, and she leads him back inside. Now, they have no more contact that contact that is romantic. But even that is skeezy. And yeah. I, I don't want you hating me because, oh, Jeremy said, watch the beguiled. And then you see that. That kind of shit is there. But mm. if you accept the wrongness of that opening, mm-hmm. and you kind of accept that this whole movie is about a really bad guy who's taking advantage of all the women in this situation and flirting with all of them and comes about this close to getting with all of them. Oh, wow. Um, I, I enjoyed watching it. Now, I think I might have enjoyed watching it solely because I disenjoyed Coppola's version so much. I've called her Coppola and Coppola in the last minute, by the Do way. Do it, baby. Um, but it's a record warm because I don't think it's a good movie. Uh, but it does some stuff. It leans more into the skeeziness in a huh. way that works, whereas... The, the the modern version leans away from that and tries to make it much more about drama. So he Colin Farrell plays more of the victim in that version. Yes. Than, than Clint Eastwood. Does. Yes. I see. Uh, and it, which is weird because at the end, Colin Farrell is screaming at her. This movie's so uncomfortable to watch. The last five minutes of this movie is him screaming, you fucking bitch. You cut my leg off. You ah. fucking bitch. Uh, but it doesn't really work. Because, but if he had done what Eastwood's character had done the whole time, and he'd like tried to get with all of them, then I could see him like getting angry at the end. Anyway, uh, it's a wreck of worn. You're gonna feel a little dirty. 
But if you have seen the, the modern remake, mm. you kind of need to go back and watch the older one mm. to at least give you the understanding of why she even thought, I should remake this. Because mm. there's something there. Interesting. Anyway. Do you know who uh, directed that? I the don't. first one? Don Siegel. Don Siegel. The guy who did the Dirty Harry movies. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, this He's, was 1971. He did he did Escape from Alcatraz. He did a lot of Clint Eastwood movies. And, ah. among amongst others. He's the the Clint Whisperer. Yeah, the kinda. Clint. <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't want to you don't want to miss that miss mess that up. <laughs> uh, okay. So I had seen this movie way back right when it came out on on Blu-ray or I guess a DVD at that point. It's a 2009 movie called Chloe. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just saw this last week. Did you really? Oh, that's when I saw it. <laughs> I had this double feature of Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And I was like, well, maybe that's it for my movie going, my movie watching tonight. And then I saw Chloe was just starting. I was like, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is Adam McGoyan, who we've talked about before, yep. who did Sweet Hereafter and did um, uh, Exotica. Exotica, yep. A uh, Canadian filmmaker. And in 2009, did a movie with Amanda Seyfried as the titular character. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh julianne moore and liam neeson's mm-hmm. and uh that's basically the oh the, there, there's a kid there's uh their child their son max terrio um and so it's basically that story uh liam neeson is a uh a college professor julianne moore is a gynecologist and chloe is a prostitute she a hoe so what happens is uh julianne moore feels like uh, Liam Neeson is cheating on her and she finds some evidence that it could be true. She finds like a picture of him and a girl on his phone, one of his students and that kind of thing. He's always been a flirtatious dude. Her kid is a child prodigy on piano and all that stuff. And so she starts thinking and I tell me if you've ever been in this situation because I have. When you start forming a narrative that your significant other is cheating on you, it's debilitating. Mm. Right? Like maybe maybe it's just me, but I can't. I become obsessed with it. Uh, it, You can't look at something objectively and say, "Well, maybe it's not happening." Mm -hmm. Uh, So Julianne Moore at this point is convinced that he's 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 going off on trips and stuff like that. She happens upon Chloe, a prostitute, and says, "I'm going to trick old Liam Neeson's. I am going to." pay her to flirt with him Mm -hmm. have you seen this movie uh no i've seen parts of it um have you Mm -hmm. yeah Um, uh, i watched it last oh you did watch it um uh so yeah she pays it pays her to flirt with him and stuff like that and then to report back to her so chloe comes back and starts saying well you know we met up a little bit and uh you know i ended up like taking him to a place that i know gave him a hand job and she's like hmm uh she she's she's devastated by the news but also there's something else going on and so then she says well let's try this one more time because it's just a hand job but you know let's let's see what happens and then on the next one that she pays her for they end up going to a hotel room she meets up at the hotel room sees the beds all mussed up and all that stuff and Mainda Seifert's naked and she's like oh you guys fucked and she says yes we did and describes exactly what happened you know this happened this happened this happened then pfft, and then, so, d- while she's doing this... Watch out, they spit. Watch out, they spit. <laughs> That's right. While she's doing this, Julianne Moore is into it. Yeah. She starts imagining it and starts rubbing things and stuff like that. Yeah. And after a while, uh, and this happens about halfway through, after a while, Chloe and Julianne Moore decide, we're going to do something about this. We're going to fuck. Mm-hmm. We're going to, yeah, we're going to get after it. And so, it's it's a sexy scene. Uh, both with Amanda Seyfried and Julianne Moore, and I dig it. And then the movie takes a whole turn. Ooh. A whole turn. And I, I want to spoil the rest. It's a 10-year-old movie. I'm not going to spoil the rest of it. All I do want to say is that she ends up fucking the son. She does. <laughs> Although- She fucks everybody in this family. Kind of. Hmm? <laughs> I love how you're trying to protect this movie. <laughs> it's like a this, nice twist, though. It's a- uh, it is. Yes. It's an obvious twist, but it's also it's, yeah, a nice Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yes. Is it's not the kind of twist that when it happens, you will be surprised. Yes. You may enjoy the twist. Yes. But you're going to be like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this movie, I think, is like right down the middle critically or something like that. Like, it's not, it's certainly not like loved by critics. Certainly wasn't seen by a lot of people. But man, I dig it. I want more of these unfaithful chloe fucking perfect murder style erotic thrillers Mm -hmm. 
not consenting adults, but like, you know, a good version oh, of that. Definitely consenting adults. Where where <laughs> it's there's room. You talk about adult. And I don't mean adult in a pervy way. Yep. Kind of. I do. But sex is a thing that adults do. Yep. And so I like it when it's done well, when it's done by a very good director like this. I didn't realize that Adam or, or mm-hmm. Goyan had done it. Um, I knew that I liked this movie and I knew it was sexy as hell. The reason that I hadn't gotten through it all the way the first go around is because it was sexy as hell <laughs> and I was watching it with somebody else. So it, it, like, I, I'm glad I went back to it. It's, it's a very big recommend. It's, it's, you know, a specific type of movie, an erotic thriller, but it's, it's really good. Mm. Okay. Erotic, not neurotic. That's right. It also has some neurosis. It does. It's yes. both erotic and neurotic. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucks the sun. Yeah. Fucks the sun. Yeah. Why not? I've I've fucked your mom, and I'm fucking your son <laughs> mm-hmm. on your mom's bed. Yeah, totally fucked up. If you're not into that, I don't. You you probably get problems. Grammatically, though, you're all over that one. I fucked your mom, and now I'm fucking the son. She fucks her his mom. Right now, I'm just saying. In that moment, she was speaking to him. Never mind. <laughs> do you have a warrant? <laughs> I do. Um, I was I was, I brought this up uh, a few weeks ago. I want I I was going through Hulu. I was I wanted to uh, get my VR headset back on, mm-hmm. and I wanted to watch a movie. And you know, Hulu's got that weird library where they can't they they have some big ones on mm-hmm. there they got some big movies but they're all big movies that i'm like no yeah <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. and then so i go into their you know their d and e list of of films and everything and like oh okay so there's a movie with keanu reeves and anna de armas in it called <laughs> exposed huh interesting i hated knock knock <laughs> Why don't I watch this too? <laughs> um, this movie is fucking bonkers. <laughs> Did this come before or after Knock Knock? I think it came after. Oh, okay, so he went back to the well. Then. I think it came after. I'm not sure. It's very cheaply done. It's hard to watch. However, if you are able to get through it, you're going to see one of the most fucking weird movies ever made, probably um so like Anna de Armas, there's there's people following Anna de Armas and like these uh th- mainly the the guys that she's with i think she's got a there's a her boyfriend's brother and then like maybe this other guy or whatever and they're coming out of a club you can see that there's like somebody following them around sort of taking pictures and i and you know it's an investigator of some sort because they sell I mean, these guys might sell drugs i'm not sure I don't remember everything about this movie. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, they go. She she's gonna go home, so she goes into uh, 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 into the tunnel to go to the subway, and she's by herself. And the and the uh, boyfriend's brother tells her, you know, be careful and everything. Um, so you see her waiting for the train, and suddenly there is a guy dressed in white who floats above the subway track. Mm. and she looks at this with some weird awe like wow what the hell is that (laughs) that's so strange uh next next thing next thing you know there's been a murder in the subway and it's of the police investigator Mm. we don't know who did it we don't know we don't have any idea who did it it's up to keanu reeves to find out he's terrible (laughs) at his job by the way terrible is he a detective he's a detective and he was the partner of the guy who got killed Ah. uh we find out that the the guy who got killed wasn't very much very nice guy that guy oh Uh, he did a lot of he did a lot of bad stuff as a as investigator christopher mcdonald randomly shows up in this movie too oh, really? yeah he's the police captain he's yeah. one of those like you gotta stop this mcgonagall you know? <laughs> um, bruce greenwood is the president yeah bruce greenwood <laughs> plays the president in a quick scene um but uh the whole thing it, it follows both of them but keanu reeves it, he he's bad at this job because he keeps he keeps not wanting. He knows that Anna de Armas was in the subway when this happened, mm-hmm. but she doesn't. Like when we when we follow her, she doesn't seem to know anything about a killing. She doesn't even seem to know about a murder. But he knows that she was there at the time of it, and he needs to ask her questions. But problem is, everybody who could have been a witness to that murder has been showing up dead, mm. and so like he he decides he doesn't want to interview her. The whole movie, by the way. <laughs> doesn't interview her because he thinks that if he brings her in she'll be exposed 
Oh. And that and that people will want to kill her. Meanwhile, they show her life. They show her life and everything. And uh and uh it's, it just goes back and forth between these two. Go shows her life and she's got a uh she's got a boyfriend that's overseas in Afghanistan. He's going to come back. They're going to get married. Um and uh and on the day, of course, on the day that he's supposed to be brought back, he, he gets he gets killed, mm. of course. A uh, couple of days later, Ana de Armas has exciting news for everybody. She's pregnant. Ghost baby? <laughs> she didn't. Know. She's pregnant. <laughs> and, every, and, and she tells this to her boyfriend's family, expecting them to believe that it's this miracle, like it's like it's an actual like baby from God. Oh. And uh, I'm definitely spoiling this movie, by the way. Oh. You're never going to watch it. No. You're never no. going to watch this piece of shit. No. <laughs> she's pregnant, and she thinks it's a miracle. She's like, but everybody else is like, your boyfriend was out in Afghanistan. She she actually thinks it's a miracle? Yes. Wow. She thinks it's a miracle. She's like, I haven't been with anybody except him, and he's in Af- Afghanistan. Hmm. And everybody, of course, of course, the family, <laughs> the family's like, you're a dirty bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and gets ostracized and everything. Um, meanwhile, she has, Ana de Armas is uh, very protective of this, gr- this one girl at, uh, she, she teaches at like some sort of like elementary school or something. Uh, she's very protective of this one girl. Even at one point, she, uh walks her home and the the little girl turns to her and says i don't want to go home i don't want to go home and you find out oh the father's abusive Mm. and um and so there's other weird shit that happens in this she keeps getting visions of some weird like robot ghost fucking thing that keeps showing up in the movie i don't know what the fuck it was i didn't rewind to go find out or whatever she keeps getting all these visions and stuff uh quickly so not quickly but soon we find out that the little girl is actually Ana de Armas and she's having flashbacks. Oh. And it's actually, she, she's actually remembering her own childhood. And uh, you're like, how does this have anything to, to, how does this relate to the subway murder, you might ask? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> On the night of said subway murder, when she saw the floating guy, she didn't see the floating guy. This is what her defense mechanism was as the fucking investigator raped her in the subway. Ah! Ah! Oh. And he and she killed him and a self-defense mechanism and did not recall the rape at all. That's why she's pregnant. Oh, the wow. end. Ah, fuck oh. that. Oh, fuck that. This is a warn, right? Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's a warn. <laughs> Who fucking came up with this shit? This movie is insane. It's insane. Like it's like they wrote the ending first, and then they said, "Well, the ending's so good and so masterful. Who cares what it's we like sit through?" They said, "Let's take Tully and Sucker Punch and yeah. put them together, <laughs> and then write backwards." What kills me though is is like how she sits there and with like utmost earnestness thinks that the family is going to believe her about the miracle baby. <laughs> Like, well, because I'm nice and because I'm honest and that we've had, we've shared a few laughs, I can share with you that I'm pregnant oh. and I don't know how. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with the, the man that you love who died in Afghanistan. That movie is fucked up. Is Canoe like even in this a lot? He is. They keep going back to him. It's both of them. But he's always just like, he, he, okay. So Mira Sorvino's also in this movie. Oh, really? Good She's too. the wife of the guy who, who got killed and she knew, she knew he was a total bastard. Ah. Um, she and Keanu have this, like, I guess they're friend dynamic, but that she wants, she wants, and now that her husband's dead, she totally wants to fuck Keanu. <laughs> um, but, uh, but like, uh, he keeps asking her questions and like other people questions. I'm just, I just kept sitting here going, and he finds out that he, you know, his partner was a bastard. I mean, he knew that. Yeah. He knows he, he knows, he knows the guy's a dick. But like, uh, he, I, I'm sitting there going, if you're a cop, 
Do you really make that decision not to ask the prime witness <laughs> at a murder scene just because she might get killed by some? Don't you? Isn't that what witness protections for? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Isn't that why you? Isn't that why you do that? That's like, crazy. and he he just hold. I don't think he talks to. I don't think they have a one scene together. Um. Hmm. Uh. Yeah. So that that movie <laughs> happened. That movie was made. Wow. Yikes. And it was made with people like Keanu Reeves, Mira Sorvino, Christian, Christopher McDonald, and Ana de Armas. That's crazy. Jesus. See, I'd be much more willing to watch Knock Knock than I would that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Knock Knock is m- way more palatable than this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is saying something. Speaking of Mira Sorvino. Yeah. Oh, yeah? It's not a segue I get to make very often because yeah. I think we even had a conversation recently like, where has she gone? Mm-hmm. And now here, back to back. Two warns from Chris and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to warn a movie called Look Away. <laughs> <laughs> is this the is this the warning about exposed <laughs> i didn't choose the title it just worked out that way so the star of this movie is a girl who she's olivia hussey's daughter she's in that i am the knight with chris pine on india isley india isley oh, nice name so she is a troubled teen goes into the bathroom moping and as teens do starts Touching her mirror counterpoint fingerprints. <laughs> she goes fingers. in slowly and kisses herself. And when she kisses herself, the evil her from inside the mirror comes out into the body. <laughs> and the good her gets stuck in the mirror. Hmm. And now evil her is off doing shit, killing people. And at, in three different scenes, tries to fuck her dad. No, no, who is Jason dude. Isaacs? What's the third one? scene, she takes off all her clothes and is standing naked in front of her dad and says, "Do you think I'm pretty?" Oh no, wow. it's fucked up. How mm. long it takes him to get out of this situation? He does not look away. It does not look away. <laughs> she should have looked away from the mirror in the beginning. Biological dad, right? Not that it matters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Mira Sorvino is her mother. This movie's hot trash garbage. And, you know, you're flipping around. You see some names you recognize. It's an R-rated <laughs> horror movie. Jeremy's going to watch. Yeah. But then I'm going to come onto the podcast and let you know better shit to spend so your time So this happens on. like at the very beginning. She just goes in and like kisses and she's evil. I wouldn't say it's the first scene. No, no, no. I'm just saying that it happens relatively early. It's the early. inciting incident, if Interesting. you will. Yes. And, and then there are a couple of scenes where like a, evil her goes into a bathroom so that good her stuck in the mirror can yell and say let me out let me out of here you're doing all these things that i wouldn't do like trying to fuck my dad (laughs) right stay away from look away it's it's bad when you had when you're when your good reflection has to talk you out of something like that (laughs) (laughs) oh my god you should watch that horror movie mirrors and then this back oh, to back. Oh my god, Vince oh, Oculus. So like, yeah. <laughs> this is a triple feature of shit. <laughs> look away with your Oculus. Use your Oculus to look away. The mirror. Uh, okay, so I, wa- I I recommended one from 10 years ago. I'm going to warn, heavily warn, something from right the fuck now. Yeah. Oh boy. Velvet Bud Saw. Okay. Oh. Velvet Buzzsaw is on Netflix right now. Uh-huh. Got a lot of press. Got uh-huh. a lot of got a lot of JoJo. Got a lot of Muju. It did ju- get ju- the ju- Mujo? Mm. Mo- mo- mm. Mojo and Juju. Muju sounds vaguely racist. Jar Jar? Yes. <laughs> it's got some Jar Jar. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal is the the main marketed dude. Uh Rene Russo, Tony Collette, and uh Billy Magnuson, of course, and John Malkovich. And it's about the art world. Okay. Now I had just seen uh, the price of everything. Have you guys seen that documentary on HBO uh, mm-hmm. about the the super high art world, no. um, where it's like basically super wealthy people trading art in a ridiculous amount of money. Um, money is no ob- literally no object in that mm-hmm. in that thing. So this takes place in that universe. Uh, there's a little bit, I think, a little bit of overlap of reality to this, mm-hmm. and so that's the setting for this uh, pansexual, bisexual dude named morph vanderwalt nice uh who's okay. played by jake gyllenhaal who happens to be naked quite a few times in this movie i'm in um mm. and he is cut man he's he's looking good these days he's right off of southpaw bro <laughs> well, <laughs> so, um he is actually very good in this movie um renee russo is 
fairly good in this movie. Mm-hmm. John Malkovich is in Bird Box, Aragon, phoning it in mode for this movie. Billy Magnuson, who I really want from Game Night, okay, yeah. who I really want to break out, is given nothing to do in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, the, the main protagonist female who ends up having sex with Jake Gyllenhaal, I think it's Zawe Ashton. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, I don't know if she's wasted in this movie. I don't know if her character is written poorly, but it's a bad performance. It's Ooh. a, it's a bad everything. Hmm. All right. And she's supposedly our protagonist. Um, she ends up uh, having sex with a new artist, David Diggs. Um, this movie is just a fucking mess. It hmm. has no idea what it wants to be. It wants to be a comedy. Uh, at one point, Jake Gyllenhaal uh, says like he comes in to find uh, his girlfriend and David Diggs have had sex. And he's naked, stirring a bowl of eggs. Of course. And he's like. And he's an art critic, by the way, is Morph. And uh, he says, you know, my reaction, my enthusiasm for your career is very much an overreaction. And that's supposed to be like this broad comedy. But it's also a gory slasher thriller. And it's also a supernatural thing. And it's also an art commentary. And it's also superb drama and stuff like that. Mm. This movie is fucking garbage. Now, I understand there are people that like this and i'm trying to understand why they liked it. have you seen it yet no um i'm i'm it's a shame though because this is dan gilroy who did the N- nightcrawl i love nightcrawl and uh, he also did roman j israel esquire <laughs> um but uh but he's the brother of tony gilroy right. who's in a lot of those a lot of good stuff that you've seen uh so it, it's it's disappointing when somebody you know has all that kind of talent does a movie like this and it's got a 5.8, so most people are agreeing with you on this. That's interesting, because I, from what I've seen, I guess just on social media and things like that, is that people are loving how bonkers... It, it, some people, I think rightfully so, have named it Meme the Movie, right? Because mm. it's all different like shots. The shot of, of Jake Gyllenhaal putting on his glasses and looking at the camera, that kind of thing. And there's a zillion little little memes and gifs that you can make out of this movie. But that does not a good movie make. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, 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 the pacing is all over the place. Rene Russo's character is all over the place. Like, just if they had picked a lane and made it more of an art com- commentary with a little bit of, like, you know, uh, violence thrown in or something like that, I would understand that. But it, it, it's trying to bite off way more than it could chew. And it is a waste of a performance from Jake Gyllenhaal that's very dynamic. That's very over the top intentionally. Um, his deliveries of this line, he, he inhabits this character and it's a waste. Mm. It's a waste because the movie it has no clue. Hmm. All right. Well, it didn't look interesting to me and it's going to have a hard time winning me over after that. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have any other recommends or warrants? Eh, I could dig down if I had to. I don't, I don't have, not, not on the top of my head. I don't know. Can I just mention one real quick? Go or no. Uh, because I, saw the higher than expected Rotten Tomatoes score. I turned on Uncle Drew yesterday. Why or the a few fuck days ago. Did you do that? Because of the unexpectedly How high, high is it? It's like sixty two or sixty three or something like that. Okay. It's still higher away. much higher than expected, right? Right. And so I was like, okay, it's got Lil Rel Howery in it. Uh it's got Tiffany Haddish for a hot minute in there. Mm-hmm. Uh and I've heard interesting things about Kyrie Irving is playing the the main character Uncle Drew right mm-hmm. um and so I was thinking maybe maybe there's some sort of story to be found in here uh it's about like a, a poor dude that moves back to Harlem and is trying to organize a basketball tournament and that's little Rel Howery mm-hmm. I will never be able to say his name by the way easily. better better than what I did on our year end and I called Brian Tyree Henry little Rel Howery <laughs> Oh, if, I was wondering. If Bill Street can talk. Bill Street. Oh, okay. I was wondering it because I was actually going to make a comment about what a great year. No, he somebody had. somebody put a comment on Facebook, and I was like, "God damn it!" Oh, that sucks. Uh, they they both came at the same time. They have names that I find somewhat similar in the uh, syllables and everything. Mm-hmm. They're and both I, larger dudes. Too. Yeah, so I just like randomly like assigned Lil Rel Howery when it was Brian Tyree Henry. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Lil Rel Howery is in. Is Man, in. so yeah, so I, it starts off awful. It starts off hideously. Mm-hmm. Cliche everything. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get to this Rucker Park League, right? And so Lil Rel Howery is trying to recruit the best players from Rucker Park and all that. Nobody wants to play on his, his tournament. 
But then Uncle Drew does that thing where he's commenting on some kids playing basketball. And they're like, man, oh, man, why don't you come up here and do it? And he's like, all right. And then, like, he comically shuffles up here and, of course, schools the motherfucker, right? Mm-hmm. And so, based off of that one performance, where dude hits, like, two threes and and a, a layup, mm-hmm. Lil Rel Howery says, I want to build my entire league around you. And he says, well, I got to pick my team. And, of course, all the fucking team are those, those is it um, Converse commercials that, that had the yeah, aged yeah, yeah. up stars? I think, it, I think so. It's Chris Weber, it's Reggie Miller, it's Shaquille O'Neal, uh, it's Nate Robinson, and all these these stars, or the, these basketball stars that are past their prime and that have heavy makeup on. Makeup looks fucking awful, by the way. And they're counted on to be funny. Chris Weber is counted on to be funny. Oh, Does he no. call any inappropriate timeouts in the movie? Yeah, I was about to say, that's the only way. That's about the only way you can make him funny. He does. Th- this is an example of this uh, This this movie's comedy he uh chris weber is a preacher right and he's called preacher is his nickname and so when they first go and and see him he's doing a baptism for an infant right but he's supposed to be putting the infant underwater Mm. and that's where the comedy comes from because he's doing around the back with the baby and he's he's about to dunk the baby into the thing and that's that's what's supposed to be i hear all the laughter the peals of laughter coming from you guys yeah this this movie is absolutely trash and i'm not saying that to be like wow these critics got it wrong i'm I'm just i don't understand how this doesn't have something higher lower than like a 3.3 or like a 13 percent on rotten tomato aggregate like i don't understand how this movie made any money it made some money right Yeah, a little bit and it it, it, and some people said it was good it is not good i don't care where you are what you're doing where you come from it's not good no, but that that fucker had a pretty low bar, right? Uh, right? Yes. You, the, the people at home are like, well, it was based on a commercial. Right. And so they kind of go in. If they laugh three times, that's a win, right? Lego movie was based on Legos. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> you know? Yeah, no, but this from the get go, sh- the trailer told you nobody put any actual heart or effort into this thing. This was a cash grab. From uh, the get-go. Sounds like Lil Rel Howery is is like the uh, the management of the Atlanta Braves in trouble with the curb. <laughs> it's very much like. Let's that. bring this peanut vendor in and throw three <laughs> strikes. Oh, he's hired. Yeah, he's in. Oh, the guy that we've been lusting after all this time. He struck out in a practice game. He's down to the minors. <laughs> Fuck that guy. And by the way, fire Matthew Lillard's ass because of that one <laughs> fucking at bat. Anyway, fucking sports movies. Man. I know. Are we going to do some uh, questions and answers today? Let's do it. Question. Question. I got something to say. I want the truth. I am listening. Yeah. Finally, it's been fucking forever, right? Yeah. I want the truth. Yeah. Um, all right. Let me start off with the fun one. Okay. Um, because I don't really like my answer to the first one. Chris's impression of Jeff Goldblum made my day. It sounded like Eugene Levy doing a cold That's movie perfect. Version. That's exactly right. <laughs> I had more Eugene Levy in that than I had Jeff Goldblum, for sure. Uh, here's a question for fan questions. Can each of you do your favorite or best impression or character voices? Uh, what's your favorite one to work into everyday conversation? I personally can do a great Stitch. Lilo and Stitch. How does Stitch? Uh, that well, that, well, that, well, that, sound, that sounds right. I haven't even seen the movie. Um, and embarrassingly can do the Jar Jar Banks to the chagrin of my wife and those around me. That sounds me. almost similar, then. Misa, then, but I'll do it, but right mm, something <laughs> i don't want to do a jar jar impression no. <laughs> uh what are your what are your best ones i don't do good impressions no i it, when i get them right it's because i get the inflection right not the voice mm. and so i always like to quote uh cypher in the matrix when he's talking about neo and he climbs up on top of him and he's talking to trinity on the phone he's like how can he be the one if he's dead <laughs> and I, like i don't sound anything like joey pants when i do that line but i get the inflection right i also yeah. like to take this opportunity to talk about one of my favorite topics which is how similar jimmy stewart and owen wilson are if you try and do impressions of either one of them <laughs> you will hmm. slide into the other one on i used to try and do a jimmy stewart because my wife's a big um it's a wonderful life fan uh-huh and so I used to go, oh, interesting situation. And then you, you get a little closer to that and you find you're doing Owen Wilson without even realizing. It's kind of like, wow. crazy, though. That's how a lot of the best voice people do stuff a lot of times. Really? They, 
like if you ever hear dana carvey talk about uh, how he does impressions or the one guy who's like a million cartoon voices that i think scott kelly Sutton. endo no. Or no 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 the guy that that uh is the voice of anakin or obi-wan yes in, uh clone wars yeah and he's in, he's got 1000 credits or yeah, something, yeah. I mean, whatever and he's got a whole like i think he has a show at universal or disney or something yeah. where he goes through all of his voices and a lot of times he says when you want to do this person you think about this person and this person you start with this one and then you start to work that other person in and then you got that that oh one. interesting you know yeah. and dana carvey does that all the time too if you hear him talk about like how he's how he came up with his bush impression it mm. was it was something similar to that like i think it might have been john wayne yeah yeah, yeah. and some i can't who remember who he threw in <laughs> uh to to make the george nah. bush yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh but um uh, as far as uh characters i do mr burns from the simpsons a lot i know that's an easy one because all you have to do is get your voice down like you know <laughs> down to this level and uh and uh but there's so many mo there's so many quotes from mr burns that i end up like just i just love over the years um there's a there's an episode that's the episode Marge on the Lamb I believe where Homer Homer is like a by himself at the at the at the house and he doesn't have any friends to go and hang out with so he's every time he calls somebody they're busy or they're whatever <laughs> and then the next <laughs> cut is Mr. Burns like in a bathrobe <laughs> like lying down on his stomach with a phone uh, <laughs> and uh, and he's like ooh that sounds delish I'll, get, so I'll just throw some jeans on and wait a minute who is this. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh and just uh when there's the part when he's like howard hughes in that one episode where it's the casino the burns's casino uh -huh. they're all covered in filthy germs aren't they smithers <laughs> <laughs> and, um and uh it's like uh He's like, uh, all right, we'll uh, get into the spruce moose. Hop in. <laughs> and Smithers is like, um, sir. And he goes, and you hear the gun cock. And he's like, I said, hop in. <laughs> and he's like, it's this <laughs> miniature thing. It's not a big plane. It's just this <laughs> miniature thing. I said, hop in. <laughs> and there's a, uh, uh, there's a, another one, uh, where, uh, uh, I can't remember which episode. Oh, it was the teddy bear episode <laughs> where uh, Burns wants his teddy bear back and he goes and negotiates because uh, Maggie's got the teddy bear and Burns tries to negotiate with Homer about getting the teddy bear and there's a uh, uh, a point where he's like, and Homer's like, is there anything else? He's like, oh, yes. And you must find the jade monkey before the next full moon. <laughs> <laughs> so I like doing Mr. Burns quite a bit. I don't know how, how good it is, but I've done Barney. I've done Homer. Who I've does done, Mr. Burns? Uh, Harry Shearer. Is it Shearer? Yeah. Um, Shearer does Burns and Smithers and has, and goes back and forth nice. during, uh, during the recordings and everything. That's, that's something I'd love to see. Actual, yeah. I'm sure there's footage of it, but, <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot of Simpsons characters and then I'll, I'll lapse into some Pacino a lot of times mm -hmm. and, uh, lap, lapse into Jeff Bridges from Lebowski a bunch. <laughs> but, uh, what is it? What is it in Lebowski that I'd like to do a lot? Um, Oh, it's the, uh, the, the shit, the new shit has come to life. Yeah, <laughs> you're not privy to the new shit. New shit has come to light. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll do those. And I've done, I mean, obviously I've done Pacino a million times on this. <laughs> Pacino, uh, I, and, and like, I don't think those are all like, uh, down to, uh, you know, they're not great or anything, but they're, they're close enough that you know yeah. who they are. The people I do the best are the people that I'm always around. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, those are the, those are the people I'll lapse into and people will go, that's pitch perfect or whatever. <laughs> um, but, uh, anyway. Yeah. I would do that. And, uh, there was a, a maintenance guy at our building at, uh, Northwestern with a super, super Chicago accent. And so anytime I'd be, it was, his name was John. John got lung cancer. And so he was holed up for a while, but he ended up being okay. And uh, anytime somebody would look for John and be like, oh, hey, guys, you know, uh, what do you need fixed there? You know, <laughs> hey, I got it. Oh, you know, it's fine. You know, it's, uh, the, the suspenders and all that stuff. Um, I don't do like actual impressions. Like most of the time, like around the house, I'll just do like one word thing. Like I can't do walking. I would love to be able to do walking. Yeah. But the only thing I can do is like, wow yeah and that's that's the extent of mm. my walk and, and the same thing with pacino like <laughs> i can't do pacino but <laughs> anytime my wife will ask me I'll be like, oh 
Oh, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even sound anything like him. <laughs> but it makes me laugh. Uh, but I can do a McConaughey. I can do McConaughey pretty well. Because he, 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 yeah, yeah. he get down to the, the register and you, you just whisper. Mm-hmm. And you just got to keep I'm on I'm doing living. Jordy LaForge right now. Yeah. That's nice. Oh, yeah. You're that's, doing that guy from Reading Rainbow. It's uh, That's LeVar right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's funny. You, you mentioned the Chicago guy or whatever. Like, there's a there's a line from The Fugitive. It's not a it's not a it's not a big line. It's not it's a it's just a random thing. A guy in a car. And I believe it's the scene where um is it is it i think it's the one our man is leaving his house or he's escaped or something i don't remember i can't remember what scene it is but there are there are cops outside uh staking out the place or watching the place or whatever and there's a point where the guy's like hey rosetti what's going on (laughs) (laughs) chicago is fuck yeah it is oh my god there's no one here. That's the guy from uh, uh, Home Alone where the guys say, I've checked that house. That door is closed. There's no one here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the extent that they do, by the way, is yeah. the home check. What are some of your favorite throwaway lines that are funnier in either TV shows or movies? My favorite one is from The Wire, season three or four. Bodhi asks one of his lieutenants, how's the slinging? His lieutenant says, my favorite line, slower than a white man in slippers. <laughs> 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 that's funny uh i don't know what the background is or the context of that statement but it cracks me up every time what do you guys think i love weed <laughs> <laughs> it's a random <laughs> shot of jay baruchel smoking weed and knocked up it's so fantastic it's that in fact i've come up with three lines and they're all pretty much subliminal uh, i mean like you could watch knocked up and forget that he even says that you know because it's not a big part of the the movie Mm -hmm. uh but uh there's another one in uh, doc hollywood it's towards the end where woody harrelson shows up uh and uh, bridget fonda is there and uh and uh, michael j fox this this is this is after he's had his south carolina excursion or whatever and he's gone out to california and he finds bridget fonda there and woody harrelson is, is there and there's a point towards the end of that because they've sort of Woody Harrelson's like this kind of sort of hunt wannabe boyfriend to Julie Warner mm-hmm. the whole movie. Like they don't really know what's going on with that. So he pretty much says, I'm, I dumped her or some crap like that. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, it emboldens Michael J. Fox. Maybe I should go back to South Carolina and get Julie Warner or whatever. So he's sitting there thinking about it and it's not even on camera. Woody Harrelson, you just hear Bridget Fonda in the background go, is that a star? And Woody Harrelson goes, no, that's Ted Danson. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny that line is so funny to me because not only is there a, that cheers connection and everything yeah but the fact is is that is that she recognizes this person enough to know that it's ted danson who is a star and that but then he goes no it's not it's ted danson. um and then there's this one also in a, this is obscure. This is Mar- one of Martin Scorsese's most obscure movies, Bringing Out the Dead. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a line. It's another one that's sort of off camera. Ving Rames, um, Ving Rames says, I'm a true coxman. I don't mix my seed. The only time I touch a white woman is when I'm holding her down for the police. Oh, my God. <laughs> And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, came up with that dialogue, my God. I know. I know. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, I recently caught, thank God, a marathon of the last three seasons of Veep on HBO, uh, Saturday or Sunday. They ran season four, five, and six mm-hmm. all in a row. I don't know if you guys are huge Veep fans. Yeah, I've seen every season. Every single episode has a cry laughing moment. And sometimes they're really throwaway. Mm-hmm. That's a scene where, uh, during I think this is during the recount, where they're trying to basically tell her she needs to act presidential. Her Amy is trying to tell her to act presidential. But what she says is, you need to do the one thing that O'Brien can't do. And Selena goes, drive sober. <laughs> it's just a throwaway <laughs> line. Um <clears throat> 
And then my other one, I think I've mentioned on the podcast before, but is from Sneakers. When they get back after the the big heist at the end, and they're they're all kind of unwinding, walking into their spy lab, and they're like, "I can't believe we just pulled out the greatest sneak in history. We can't tell anybody about. I can't believe they did this, that, and this." And then Dan Aykroyd goes, "I can't believe tomorrow's Thursday." <laughs> and it's just completely the movie just steps on it and moves right on. But it's just perfect. I always love that line. As so that's exactly how a human being would react. In that moment, <laughs> be like, it feels like six weeks have gone yeah, by. Yeah. By the way, uh, Paul Schrader, of course. Wrote, I was going to suggest that yeah, it was Paul Schrader wrote that, that wrote, wrote that line. Oh uh, my God. There's a there's one just all time Veep line, and, I, and it's Zach Woods who says it. Uh, he's talking to Jonah, who's the you know the guy who's always getting just shit on mm. all over the place in that. But he's like. You're not even a man. You're like an early draft of a man where they just sketched out a giant mangled skeleton, but they didn't have time to add details like pigment or self-respect. You're Frankenstein's monster if the monster was made entirely of dead dicks. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, that's insane. That show is fucking phenomenal. That show is, oh, that is. is crazy. I always like, there's so many things that we quote from Cable Guy that uh, that i love that we say all the time but uh one of the the sneaky good ones i was watching this not too long ago the sneaky good ones is when jim carrey first comes over to matthew broderick's apartment and he's putting in the cable and he's you know so i'm the tardy one and all that stuff and uh so he comes in and he's saying i'm just jerking you chain and all that after a while matthew broderick lays down the law he's like i'm going to take a shower can you please just install the cable and then he goes sure and as he's about to go in, he's like, no sweat off of my sack. <laughs> yeah. It kills me every time because you, you, I'm 100% positive that I was an ad lib. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just. Well, Jim Carrey, you're probably getting that a lot. <laughs> no sweat off of my. And I say that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> The other one is, I, I actually was watching Oh Brother War the, the other night, and uh, there's a ton of stuff, hyper-literate stuff thrown in there, especially from Everett, from George Clooney's character. And there's there's a, a funny argument between him and John Turturro's character where he's like, he, he, he has just uh, stolen a watch from the hog waller that turned him in. And so uh, Turturro is like, man, you stole from my kin. And he said, well, I was I was I didn't steal it. Who was fixing to turn us in? And he's like, well, you didn't know that at the time. He was like, so I was holding it until I could figure out if he was going to turn us in. And he says, like, that don't make no sense. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Ulysses <laughs> comes in or Everett comes in. And he's like, Pete, it's a fool that looks for logic in the chambers of the human heart. <laughs> 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 it somehow derails the conversation enough for Delmar to like re the death. Uh, I love it. I love that movie so much. One of these days, we do need to do like a definitive ranking of Coen Brothers. Movies. I'll uh, I'll take this opportunity for one more uh, MacGruber reference. Uh, <laughs> okay, because when they go at the end in the climax, it's him and Ryan Phillippe to attack MacGruber's compound. They're trying to rescue. Um, uh, Kirsten Wig uh, and stop the missile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're walking up. They're talking about how how much they're going to kick ass. And McGruber says something along the lines of, "I hope they have a big hole dug out and back because if they don't, it's going to start stinking out here pretty soon because of all the dead bodies." <laughs> and, like Ryan Phillippe, he's like. It's a pretty gross way to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Phillippe has a half a dozen lines in this movie that are just like normal person's reactions to MacGruber. Anyway. I will never, ever, ever understand your obsession with Have you gone back to it since I first brought it up? I actually haven't. I've got well, need to go. Go. Uh -huh. want, If you go back to it and don't like it more than you previously did, then then we'll talk. MacGruber! Oh. Making life-saving inventions out of household materials. <laughs> Well, that'll do it for this week. Uh, keep going to Sincast presented by Cinema Sins on Facebook, uh, SoundCloud, uh, Cinema Sins Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, Reddit. There's uh, Discord. Discord. There's uh, we even get good old fashioned emails. Yeah, we do from all over the world. We were sitting in Lego Two. Chris and I were uh, sitting and uh, got an email from uh, Northern Ireland as we were waiting mm -hmm. for the, the previews to start. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Keep them coming, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but uh, that'll do it for this week. It's Chris Atkins and Jeremy Scott and Barrett Sherr. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com.
they did a whole thing about the timeline of stuff like Cosby Show and oh, uh, Friends and everything. And the, the pregnancy, they were talking about all the different events that occurred. <laughs> and they were like, in the end, she had to have given birth in like two months. <laughs> <laughs> something like that it was something <laughs> it was something was very very quick <laughs> that's awesome or yeah. it was either very very quick or very very like two years or something but i think it was quick <laughs> because they were talking about like how all these different things like i gotta find that <laughs> have you has either of you seen that movie dumplin dumplin that has yeah. that uh overweight girl in it no it's got jennifer aniston in it okay but it's scored. So one of the the CDs that Aaron gave me was the soundtrack for uh, for Dumplin', and it's Dolly Parton, oh. and oh, she's yeah. doing like all different um, like collaborations, like with Sia and with like Janelle Monae, and one of them is with Jennifer Aniston. Actually, oh, okay, really good stuff. But it's on Netflix, and I keep looking at it. I have no idea what it's about, but I'll I'll probably watch it. I, the reason why I thought you meant some other movie because there was something that came on a month or two ago and it has a name like that and it's about this heavy girl who's like a rapper or like she's patty cakes patty cakes oh, that yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah that's oddly watchable yeah it is it, oh i heard good things about it p b and j p b and j that's their rap song because <laughs> she's patty cakes and he's uh whatever anyway their their rap group is P B N J, and their first rap song is P B N J. I thought you were going to say "Precious" based on the novel "Push" by oh, no. <laughs> that. No, that but- <laughs> title went through my head. Patty Cakes is the white comedy rapper version of. Never mind. Is she comedy rap? No, but the movie is part comedy. Oh, is it really? The movie. It's it's weird. It's I really weird. want to watch it. <gasps> weird, weird. <laughs> In my dreams, you're blowing me. Kisses. <laughs> uh, that's what something something meant to do. Shit. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Ways that make us feel good. Hey, how old is Jenna Fisher? Uh, oh, let's see. Go. Jenna Fisher. She is slightly younger than me. Really? No, no, no. Older than me. She's older than me. Shit. Sorry. Uh, she's slightly older than me. Uh, was once married to James Gunn. Oh, uh, really? yeah. I think 1974. That'd make her 42. Isn't she married to somebody kind of odd? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> right on. <laughs> nice. Good job. <laughs> uh, right now she's married to Lee Kirk. You know how people invert shit and fuck to, to make it more comedic? Like, uh, what the shit is that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And because it's a little, you know, subversive. Yeah. I wanted to start doing that with... But the other way around, like saying bullfuck instead of bullshit. <laughs> or mother shitter. <laughs> mother shitter. <laughs> There's got to be some way to insert fuck where a shit is the only thing that you can do. And that makes it fantastic. Mm-hmm. I haven't found that opportunity yet. Yeah. Uh, I may start with bullfuck. Yeah, bullfuck. Hold on. <laughs> That's some serious bullfuck right there. Yeah. <laughs> Bullfuckery. Yeah, that episode where she gets implanted and then takes the pregnancy test, that bookends that famous uh, trivia contest where oh, yeah. it's Rachel and Monica versus Chandler and Joey, and they end up betting the apartment. Yeah. Uh, but it's the funniest episode what, of that show ever. What does Chandler Bing do for a living? Yeah, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> the, the reaction, Monica's reaction, I think it's Monica's reaction, is the greatest part of that episode. Because when Ross declares them the winner, she's like, No! It's awesome. It's awesome. What was Monica's nickname when she was a goalie? Big fat goalie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the episode is just full of that shit. Rapid fire <laughs> jokes that play on like the previous three seasons. Uh, David Schwimmer's perfect in that too. He, really he is goes too. into video or uh, game show host mode. Two hundred dollars. Stop that now. He's never going to do anything else, right? He's done plenty. He's done, I've seen him do some like dramatic, like for FX. Didn't he do an FX show or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he was on uh, the People vs. O.J. Simpson. Oh, no, no, I'm not thinking about that. Uh, I guess that's a big deal. He was on like a series, though, wasn't he? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Probably. Band I mean, nothing, nothing to the Every, level of a Jennifer Anderson. Anybody you name is in the third season of a TV show you've never heard of. That's true. <laughs> they are a little bit more tied to those roles than most sitcom stars. 
Yes. Yeah. Although Kelsey Grammer ha- has not really been able to do anything except Frasier. Two nope. massive hit shows. He wins lots of Emmys and probably 32 shows that were canceled in three episodes or less. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Did you ever watch Boss? I loved Boss. Boss was the only one that worked, but nobody watched that because it was on stars. It was mm. great. He was great. He was? Yeah, because he's playing a mayor who's corrupt. He's like a a, a, a villain protagonist, mm-hmm. if you will, but he's also losing his mind. Um uh, some kind of hinted at, I think, Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or something. Ah. And he's hiding it from everybody. Huh. Uh, but he sees things and hears voices um, huh. all while trying to cling to his power. I thought it was a great show, but I think it only had one or two seasons. Nobody watched it. Stars. Yeah. Uh, he was on a, a the show I was thinking about is called Feed the Beast. Oh, it was like I did this gritty it. crime. Yeah. It was AMC. It wasn't okay. FX. <clears throat> um, but, you know, he was uh, he did the Madagascar stuff, I guess. But like. He's probably the one that has had, I mean, Matt LeBlanc. I mean, Matthew Perry had a good run of movies. None of them were good. Uh, LeBlanc has had good. a couple of good shows. He had that episodes show. Was that good? I never saw it, but it was critically acclaimed. Mm. And now he's got a CBS sitcom that looks terrible, and he's yeah, probably he's, just coasting. He's totally in neutral Aniston's right had plenty of good movie roles. <laughs> she is by far the most successful. I well, and Lisa Kudrow has done both. She pops in movies here, and then she does that um, that HBO show she did. What was it? Was it uh, second show? career of my, my so-called life. What is it called? Coming back into the spotlight. The comeback. Comeback. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say David Schwimmer has probably had the bummest luck of all of them, but I also read an article the other day that they all make like millions of dollars a year sure. from Why, yeah, the just residuals fucking... from that show because it is uniquely as popular in Europe today as it was in America 20 years ago for some crazy. reason. Ross, Ross, or uh, David Schwimmer is the Joey Fatone of the, <laughs> yes, <laughs> did you, do you know who Joey Fatone is? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Sadly, I do. <laughs> <sighs> I think Joey Fatone and I share a birthday. <laughs> oh, I was looking up. Is it Mackenzie Davis? Uh, somebody that we were just talking about is one day older than me. One of the, the women oh, yeah? we were talking about. Oh, wow. uh, it was October 4th, 1979. Huh. Um, and she is in much better shape visually than I am. I tweeted about this, but like a month ago, I was buying wine at a grocery store. It was like nine in the morning. This <laughs> tiny little, yes, there's this tiny little, like just out of high school, couldn't be older than 18 or 19, little gal is working. She asks for my ID and I show it to her. And she says, we have the same birthday. And I look up and she goes, different years though. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you were probably born in what? 90? She said 2000. Oh, I was like, oh. oh man. <laughs> Jeez, I had, a, I had a rad children of men dream the other night. Not worth a rad one, huh? <laughs> yeah, because I knocked somebody up, and Ooh. and uh, so, but it was so it's the first one, and so I'm like trying to get my wife. Uh, it's it's a little less dystopian of a future. I like how but, initially she was somebody, and now she's your wife. The next sentence, I knocked somebody up. My wife and I were trying to get to such and I wonder, such. Was she my wife? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so like we're we're trying to to like figure out how to get around everything and to show that she's not pregnant and all that stuff. And it was it was a lot of fun. It was more mm. like a, like an escape type. See, of thing. See, that sounds like the kind of dream that I would wake up like soaked. <laughs> <laughs> that's everything like, about that pregnant anxiety, children of men. <laughs> anxiety in dream form is what that is like no. seinfeld said there's good nudity and there's bad nudity like naked can opening not good mm-hmm. <laughs> naked torture not good naked crouching yes <laughs> hidden dragon <laughs> um <laughs>